I'm Patricia Whitelock, and it's my fantastically privilege to welcome you here this morning. Um, Professor Reddy, uh, Vice Chancellor of UCT, Mr. Imran Patel, Deputy Director General of the Department of Science, Technology and Innovation. Thank you for honoring us with your, your presence this morning. NASP Associates, NASP lecturers, administrators, graduates, students, and general support structure. It is absolutely wonderful to see you here today. You are all very, very welcome. A special welcome for people who are out, probably not with us yet, but the, our African-American colleagues who will be joining us online later. But the important people here today are you, the NASP graduates. Uh, and I am incredibly proud of you and your achievements. Um, We've got people in the room from all over South Africa, but we've also got people who've come from Namibia, Uganda, Europe, North America, and Australia, and others online joining us uh, today and tomorrow. Many of you have made very successful careers within uh, astronomy or space physics. Others have gone into very different, very diverse careers, and we're going to hear something about the flavor of those over the next couple of days. Uh, it's difficult for me to express just how pleased I am that that is the way that things have turned out. Over 20 years ago, 21, 22 years ago, when we first started talking about the need for NASP for developing the astrophysics community, some of my colleagues said, ah, you can't possibly do it. Ten, uh, ten, graduate 10 people a year, they'll never get jobs. And I said, absolute nonsense. A well-educated astronomer can do anything. Actually, almost anything. Not <laughs> I don't want to trust any of you for brain surgery, but <laughs> almost anything. And collectively, you have proved me right. Uh, it's always nice to be proved right. So. It, none of this, of course, would have been possible without funding. And we actually have quite a lot of people to thank for funding. We will do that over the course of the next two days and in the book. There isn't time to go into it all now, but there are just two, two groups that I want to mention. First, NASP got started because of support from the Ford Foundation, led by Ahmed Bawa at the time. Without that, we wouldn't have got started. But the people who have kept us going is the Department of Science, Technology and Innovation. Uh, we are, are very, very grateful to that. They have gen generously contributed, not just to the uh, symposium, but of course to the, to the bursaries that NASP students get, uh, and to the book that you will hear more about later, that will come out later this year, the book about NASP. So without more ado, I would like to, to invite uh, Mr. Imran Patel to say a few words on behalf of the department. Thank you very much. Thanks, Patricia, and uh, good morning to, to all of the colleagues. I, in fact, thought that uh, Prof is going to be first up. up so <laughs> um, let me just say a few words. Uh, it's, it's firstly my privilege to be part of this uh, engagement. There's a few people that uh, Takalani has sent the name. I don't know this ecosystem in this community, so forgive me if I just have to, to, to read this, uh, this out here. But, uh, uh, Prof. Daya Reddy, uh, um, uh, TSI uh, Chief Director Taklani Namangwani, uh, which everyone knows, the NESP Exco, uh, the NESP uh, uh, Node Directors, particular Prof. Uh, Sali Ali and Dr. Sarah Blaith. I haven't met, I've, I've just met uh, uh, Sali. Uh, and then Prof. Siva Venkataraman and Prof. Uh, Stefan Ferreira from Northwest University in UKZ and um, respectively. Um, and then very importantly, as Patricia said, uh, to the NASP alumni. My task is uh, here to, to learn over the next day. I'll be with you just for the day and hopefully with the dinner. But very importantly, to begin to think with Takalani, how is it that we take forward the very, very successful program that we've achieved over the last 20 years? Um, at the Department of Science and Innovation, we've just recently adopted what we call the Decadal Plan on Science, Technology and Innovation. What's important about the Decadal Plan 
is after many iterations, the acknowledgement that that decadal plan walks on two feet, as, as the DG would say. The first is where we've had very successful programs, particularly in, basic, uh, in building up the basic sciences, in now creating a research infrastructure fund, in our progress that we've made on the Square Kilometer Array, uh, work that we've done recently uh, to understand the status of our basic sciences and where we take it to, et cetera, the fundamentals of any uh, effectively functioning science system. And so there is a commitment in the decadal plan that we would continue to do that. Yeah? Um, so there's no fear around that. Uh, and then secondly, as part of us growing the science system, we need to look much more deeply. I don't think we've been unsuccessful, but there's uh, a lot of space that remains in this void to fill uh, to ensure that these capabilities, capacities, and strengths that we've built can be more effectively deployed uh, to address socioeconomic challenges. And for that, it's not only the scientific investments, but it's also investments in changing the way that we do work in government. So we've recently put in place something called an Interministerial Committee on Science, Technology and Innovation that allows us to bring in other government departments uh, to enhance the co-funding opportunities that we need to be looking at. There was, uh, the president hosted the first uh, presidential plenary on science, technology and innovation in December. And there the attempt is to make sure that there's a much more closer alignment between the science system and the private sector and other key stakeholders in how best we use science, technology, and innovation. However, and this is the message I want to leave people with, is that with that, there is a need to tweak and modify and change and grow and think about links. Um, so in the case of NASP, uh, we have the NAS program, we have the SKA bursary program, then we have other related programs. We've announced in December something called a presidential PhD program. As we're moving into the next administration of government, there would be need to reflect on where we've come with, what has been successful, what is it that we do, and what is our ambitious vision for growth. We, not we may not have the funding, but we're hoping that we will use in the next five years um, uh, the mechanism of a lot more um, co-funding with other partners. So I look forward to hearing and beginning. So this symposium, in fact, comes at a, a very opportune time uh, because it allows us to hear firsthand from beneficiaries, from others, what has been the successes, and to make sure as we move and we tweak and we modify and we grow that we don't lose uh, sometimes what are the strengths of the program. And sometimes the strengths of the program are not obvious. What do you see? Uh, kind of some of the support networks, the linked workplaces that we're wanting to introduce, etc. So I um, uh, hope you have uh, um, very uh, um, uh, valuable uh, discussions, and, and I look forward to hearing some of that in the course of today. Thanks, Patricia. <laughs> Thank you very much in, indeed. We're all very excited about the future uh, and excited about the need to change. Things can't stay the same and, and there are certainly visions for how things could be very, very much better. But uh, thank, thank you for sharing the vision of the department uh, with us. We have some gifts. Are you going to leave those till the end? Or? Fine. Thank you very much. The idea of NASP as a national collaboration, I think, was basically a good idea. But as we got started with it, it, it became obvious to those of us who, in, who were involved that uh, uh, getting it started wasn't really just, wasn't the really important thing. The level of support that you need, the hard work from very many people at all sorts of dis, uh, levels is, is absolutely vital. But you also need uh, intellectual uh, support and ideas at a very, very high level. And I count myself extremely fortunate that one of the first people I spoke to about NASP was the then Dean of Science at UCT, Professor Dyer Reddy. Uh, and I think many of us count ourselves as very fortunate that he is today the Vice Chancellor of UCT. Uh, and I would like him to say a few words to us uh, about NASP, UCT, uh, life, the universe, and everything else. Thank you, Patricia. 
Vice Chancellor Interim Writer. <laughs> not, not forever. <laughs> um, thank you very much, uh, Patricia, um, <clears throat> DDG Imran Patel, uh, colleagues, um, students, graduates from NASP and otherwise. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be uh, among scientists, uh, let me say, because I spend my days with uh, all sorts of people, very, very seldom uh, with people from, or colleagues from uh, the community from, from which I come. So it really is a pleasure to, uh, to welcome you uh, on behalf of the University of Cape Town uh, to this event. I'm delighted that the, uh, the 20th um, anniversary celebration of NASP is taking place here, and particularly uh, delighted because, as Patricia mentioned, um, I was fortunate uh, to have been the Dean of the Science Faculty at the time that NASP was conceived. So uh, I do recall, and, and in fact this event has, has caused me uh, to, to reflect on um, the period back then when working with colleagues uh, here uh, in various departments, astronomy, physics, uh, mathematics and applied mathematics, and of course colleagues um, elsewhere working with our national facilities as well. This idea grew and became eventually a reality. It was certainly not at all um, an easy uh, goal to, to arrive to, to achieve and to arrive at uh, being national in nature for one thing. Um, we were very fortunate as we've heard to have uh, received solid financial support at just the right time as well. Um, I, I wanted to, in fact, I, I have reflected also on, on the context at the time, or um, at least in the period of the 2000s and onwards uh, in relation to astronomy in space science, uh, broadly speaking, in South Africa and of course <coughs> NASP in particular. So, um, first of all, we, we had at the time approval by government, you know, support by government for SALT, the Southern African Large Telescope, which was a major achievement. Um, it uh, was a particularly far-sighted uh, decision by government to do so. And I remember colleagues at the time um, in the NRF and, and elsewhere um, discussing the, the task that the then minister had in persuading her colleagues um, in cabinet to support this scientific venture in a context in which fellow, uh, fellow cabinet colleagues will be, would be talking about the, the desperate needs um, and challenges that we were facing in the country at the time and of course still do face today. Nevertheless, um, the, the the vision was, was understood, and um, the, the fact in particular that uh, there was a strong developmental component to NASP, not least in the sense that um, it's, um, or rather to, to SALT and supportive astronomy, in the sense that um, it was not only a group of, of scientists who would be benefiting from the telescope at the time, but really communities, scientific and, and beyond. So that was wonderful. And then subsequently, of course, we've, we've had further major decisions, uh, support for uh, the square kilometer array and of course the Meerkat Radio Observatory. So if one looks at this context, the, if you like, the, the, um, the, the arguments for programs, academic programs, uh, a graduate program in particular in astronomy and space science were fairly obvious. And, and year two, I think that um, at an early stage, it was well and clearly understood that it is not as if we were going to be graduating hundreds and hundreds of honors and masters students um, who were all necessarily going to want to become astronomers or astrophysicists. Um, the fact of the matter is, was, and it is most definitely the case, that uh, the, the education 
that our NASP graduates um, have received, will have received, um, equipped them for a range of careers, given the com combination of um, quantitative skills, modeling, problem solving, um, that, uh, that they would have acquired along the way. And that has been the case, and we've, uh, we've in fact um, uh, seen, we've, we've been able to observe now over a period of 20 years that um, our NASP graduates have, have succeeded. They've succeeded in a range, a wide range of careers, finance in various um, components of industry as well. And um, in fact, I was, I was given, I was given data uh, about um, how far we've come in that we've graduated 473 honors students uh, of whom 216 went on to, to complete master's degrees. And uh, I believe that there are further 50 in the pipeline for this year. So that augurs really well for, for the program. Um, the success of, of NASP, I think, lies first and foremost in its collaborative nature and, and structure, right from the very beginning. Um, very, very strong interdepartmental collaboration and then also interinstitutional collaboration. It simply would not have seen the light of day otherwise, together with a, an innovative teaching model necessarily, given that this was a national program, albeit located uh, physically, if you like, at UCT. And so one had to figure out how our colleagues from different universities were going to collaborate um, nationally uh, with a program or in a program in which the students were located here. Well, of course, uh, it has moved on since then, and uh, we now have nodes uh, also at University of KwaZulu-Natal and Northwest University. I think it's really important in, in talking about um, collaboration uh, to, uh, to acknowledge the central role that has been played by the relevant national facilities, the, Southern Af the South African Astronomical Observatory, uh, the South African Radio Astronom uh, Astronom Astronomy Observatory, rather, and the South African National Space Agency as well, as uh, real core components of this um, network and um, highly successful collaborative structure, within which, of course, one finds embedded almost uh, in a natural way um, multidisciplinary thinking and, and work and, and activity. <clears throat> So, um, the, the, you know, the strength of, of research and development activity in astronomy, I think, is, is really clear. Um, and um, I talked earlier about, the, um, about other significant developments. Uh, it is really quite clear and obvious uh, around the world that, um, that we have considerable strengths in astronomy and space science in this country and there are very indication there are various indications of that recognition for example in that um, South Africa will be hosting this year the quadrennial general assembly of the International Astronomical Union the IAU in August uh, of this year the first time I think that um, the assembly is being hosted in an African country. So that really is cause for, for huge celebration and congratulations as well. And it's clear acknowledgement of, of the stature, I think, of um, astronomy in, in this country. The African connection is also an important one for various reasons, certainly for UCT, as which regards itself as a university, which certainly is in Africa, but also a university for Africa. But, uh, but really for the national program as well. And uh, I'm, I'm delighted to, to have learned of the many NASP graduates from countries, uh, from African countries uh, beyond South Africa who have come through the program, who have succeeded. And what I really would like to see um, happen is a, a strengthening of those connections and networks beyond South Africa. Um, a, an expansion of, of the reach to countries uh, in Africa which uh, up to now have not had students participate in the program. 
it's important also in, in this regard you know, to, to note the, the participation of um, other African countries also in the SKA program. So in many of these initiatives, we are serious, I think, about our place in Africa and the importance of making these connections. Um, there is another, there's another aspect to all of this, and it's really got to do with, um, well, very broadly speaking, um, science, uh, scientific research in the global south and uh, the developing world, and um, in Africa in particular. The reality being, of course, that by and large, with some exceptions, by and large, um, Africa finds itself at the margins, um, invisible, um, really not um, invited to the table, as it were, um, and certainly not a participant in, in the true sense of the word in, um, in scientific research ventures. There are exceptions, of course, but um, with regard to these various developments in, in astronomy and space science, we have here an example of South Africa in particular and Africa to a growing extent becoming a real partner, a real collaborator, um, colleagues here whose, whose uh, involvement and partnership uh, are sought. Um, and in that way, I, th I think that the program is making um, a considerable contribution towards the whole business of placing South Africa, Africa more, more generally uh, at the center of, of developments, of scientific, excuse me, scientific developments, so that uh, we are not simply uh, recipients or consumers, but we are contributors as well and, and partners in the true sense of the word. And I think this is a, a wonderful example of this. So, um, with that, I, I really wish uh, all of us, uh, in NASP in particular, everything of the best. I would like to see a further strengthening of NASP, a further expansion of NASP, and um, I would like to see an expansion also of the resourcing of NASP. I think uh, it has been so important in ensuring its, um, its excellent start and its continued success and I hope that we are going to see a great deal more of that. So, again, congratulations. Again, I, I'd, I'd like to thank and acknowledge um, the participating institutions, um, including our national facilities, for what you have done uh, in order that we are able to be here today and to celebrate a truly remarkable achievement. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Reddy, and particularly thank you for the emphasis on collaboration. Uh, we're looking forward to strengthening that in so many ways. Now I have pleasure in introducing our first NASP graduate. Uh, Ros Skelton got her MSc from UCT in 2007 before going to the Max Planck Institute in Germany for her PhD, which she finished in 2010. She's currently a SALT astronomer and Head of Research at SAO. She's also Chair of the NASP Consortium and the co-organizer and the, done the lion's share of the work for, for this particular meeting, Roz. Good morning, everybody. It's such a pleasure to be here and, and see all your faces, some from a very long time ago. Uh, and some new faces, um, and I hope that we'll enjoy the next two days together as we reflect on 20 years of NASP. Um, could you put up my presentation, or do I? Sleeping. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, almost there. 
done. Uh, this is it. And show. Ah. Come on. From the beginning. Yeah. And your notes. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Thanks, everyone. So there's a lot to talk about, obviously, in reflecting on 20 years of the National Astrophysics and Space Science Program. Uh, but I'll keep this short and try and share with you uh, some of the successes of NASP over the years. And you'll hear from many people who have been in NASP over the next two days to, to really drive that home. Um, but I'll share a little bit about the numbers um, and also some of the results of our survey of NASP alumni that we did last year as part of this uh, sort of capturing, trying to capture some of the history of the last 20 years. So firstly, I'd like to um, add to Patricia's thanks and really thank the people who have sponsored this event, particularly the Department of Science and Innovation uh, and UCT for hosting us. Um, and all of you who have traveled from near and far and taken time off work to be with us, it's very special to see you. Um, and I'd particularly, we have a big organizing committee and they've all done an amazing job over the last year, almost a year. Um, but I'd particularly like to thank Patricia, um, Nasli and Nikki who've really made this happen. This would not be possible without them. So I think everybody knows what NASP is, particularly you know, those of us who have been in it and, and organized it and you know, contributed to it over the years. But just to give you a brief introduction, um, it's the Nas National Astrophysics and Space Science Program Honours and Masters Program. Uh, we know it was established in the early 2000s and took in its first students in 2003. And as has been highlighted already this morning, an important part of it is that it's a collaboration between different institutes different universities across the country and the national facilities. Um, and that is, is, I think, you know, the real strength of NASP. Uh, initially, it was hosted at UCT um, and then later uh, Northwest University and UKZN were added, taking in their first, first students in 2016. So here you can see just the map of, of uh, the host universities and all of the partner universities that have contributed to NASP over the years to different extents, um, as well as the national facilities and the Department of Science and Innovation, which have been very important for funding NASP. So NASP's vision is to create human capacity, not only in astronomy, but also in big data, uh, space physics, uh, and technical skills um, and to build this network of people uh, that are linked through a, a common background of schooling in NASP um, and are able to contribute to the growth of South Africa and to uh, science in our country in particular. To be a little bit more specific about some of the goals, um, NASP needed to encourage undergraduates to follow um, postgraduate studies in astronomy and provide uh, enough funding for that to happen. Um, it provides a pipeline for PhD programs in astronomy and space science. Um, but its aim was not only to develop that pipeline for academia, but to develop people who have scientific and technical expertise um, that can contribute to society in various ways, in industry, in commercial activities, um, as well as academia. And uh, in so doing, also nurture this community and this network of people, as I've mentioned together. Um, and build a representative community that, that represents better the demographics of South Africa. Um, and we know, bef you know, in uh, 20 years ago, the astronomy community in particular in South Africa was not at all representative. And so we are making some progress towards changing that. So NASP has graduated almost 700 people, 699 by last count. Um, these numbers have changed slightly over the last few days as we try to incorporate the 2023 graduates. Um, so 464 honours graduates from um, all three nodes together and 235 master's graduates. Um, and we know that there's a bit of a time delay, a delay with master's and so there are actually many more master's students in the pipeline uh, who are set to graduate this year or in the next uh, two years. 
So that's uh, 699 in total, and about 70 of those, uh, a little bit more than 70, have come from outside of South Africa. And that uh, the other African countries in particular were a big part of NAS, particularly in the early years, and that has changed somewhat over time. This is just showing you how those student numbers have changed over the years. And you can see there are three real phases that NASP has gone through. So in the early years, uh, when NASP just got started, there were about 14 honors graduates per year, uh, a, a bit less than a third uh, black and a bit less than a third female. And the number of women in NASP has stayed relatively constant at around 30% over the years. So there's definitely room for improvement there. Um, the number of black students has grown, um, and in particular, the postgraduate bridging program, which later became known as the extended honors program, was very important in changing these demographics, and we'll hear more about that later. Um, so uh, then the next change was um, having three nodes from 2016, and uh, the number of honor students is around 30 a year since, since the stability of those three nodes. Uh, again, about a third female and two thirds black in the last five years. In, master, in the master's graduates, you can see similar three phases, about nine per year in the first five years, going up to slightly more 11 per year in the middle period, and more recently 19 per year. Um, the peak is actually in 2020, and then we were hit by COVID, and that has certainly had an impact. And so. Uh, there's been a bit of a backlog of students who um, struggled particularly with, with the changes that needed to take place to manage the pandemic. Um, and we're only just starting to renormalize after that. Um, again, the fraction of women in masters, uh, less than a third and reasonably constant throughout the period. So I hope to see that improve in future. And there's certainly room for improvement on all the demographics. Where are NASP graduates now and what do they do after leaving NASP? Uh, well, we did this survey last year as part of preparation for this, this 20th anniversary, and we had a very good response from 240 people. So I'd like to thank all of you who responded to that and shared that uh, with your classmates um, and friends. Um, yeah, we were qu quite happy with that response, and it's been really interesting to see people's reflections on their time in NASP to see where they are now, what they're doing. Um, and that survey is still open, although at some point we will have to stop accepting new responses for, you know, to define what exactly goes into the book that we're busy producing. Um, but if you haven't yet filled it in or know someone who hasn't, please encourage them to do that. So NAS students are really all over the world and literally on every continent, including Antarctica, which I think is just wonderful. So we'll hear from our Antarctic engineer later today. Um, where do NAS students come from? Um, in the survey, the country of origin, or well, there were 21 different countries of origin, um, almost all in Africa, I think three uh, non-African countries. Um, and so here you can see the map of Africa, uh, where, where everyone came from, um, mostly South Africa, of course, but 54 in the survey who came from elsewhere in Africa. And many of those African uh, colleagues have gone back and are working at universities elsewhere in Africa. So this map shows the responses, uh, people who are working at universities in Africa. Uh, so about 17 working at universities elsewhere in Africa, and we'll hear more about that over the next two days as well. What do NAS graduates do? Uh, we've, I think we've heard and we know that uh, many do stay in, academic, in the academic world, in science, um, but there all, is a great variety um, and um, about so of many of the respondents are still studying towards masters or PhD, but of those who are working, more than 90 are involved in science in some way or another. Uh, more than 40 are doing data science, data analysis or software development. Um, and then significant other groups are business and industry um, in South Africa, tech um, and education. So um, a lot of the NAS graduates who filled in our survey went on to do a master's and a PhD. About 100 have already graduated with their PhD and another 20 or so expected to finish in 2024. 
Um, and this has really helped grow our scientific communities. So uh, 28 work at South African universities all over the country. Another 28 work at our national facilities. So Sareo, SAO, SANSA, IDEA, CSIR. Um, and, and then I already mentioned those who are working at other universities in Africa and similar numbers working at universities across the world. So we are um, really, we have spread across the world and are making a difference to the science communities. So personally, NASP has been very important as my first taste of uh, scientific research and my entry into the world of astronomy on a serious level. And I'm very grateful to everyone who made that possible, um, you know, those that lectured and supervised, but also all of those who worked behind the scenes to set up NASP um, and to, to make it work. So thank you very much. And the landscape has, has changed dramatically from 20 years ago to today. We have fantastic science infrastructure with SALT, Meerkat, many other telescopes um, and space science infrastructure as well. Um, and the question now is, is how we go forward. So it's clear that NASP has had many successes uh, that we will reflect on in the next two days. But it relies on collaboration and partnership. Um, and I hope that we can take that forward um, and build on the strengths of NASP going forward. So, thank you. I'm really sorry that we don't have time for questions because I'm sure people will have lots of questions for Roz. You will have to leave them till, till the tea break. Um, is Sali Ali uh, here somewhere? Sali? Uh, the, it looks like we may not be able to get to Tebe for the talk after next, so you might like to rapidly write a talk. <laughs> <laughs> We know how innovative you are. Uh, sorry. Uh, our next speaker probably doesn't need any introduction. P Peter Dunsby uh, managed, was the director of, of NASP for the first decade. He had numerous challenges, problems. He also had lots of support, but he, uh, despite uh, all sorts of things. He managed to put it on a very firm footing, uh, uh, and I'd like him to invite him to tell us about it now. Uh, Peter. So I'm sure many of you will recognize the younger self in uh, this, this first slide. Um, it is uh, an enormous pleasure to be here today um, and to see so many um, friends and, and colleagues uh, spanning all the way back to, to the very first years of NASP. Um, and I, I'm particularly excited to see Manfred here and, and also Edward Jura from Uganda, um, who I haven't seen, I think, for a good 15 years. Um, anyway, so. Um, uh, Roz has, has, has spoken very nicely about giving, giving an overview of the, the program, of the entire program over the 20 years. What I want to do uh, this morning is talk about um, those, early, those early days um, and, um, and some of the challenges and successes that, uh, that came from, from those years. So instead of starting in the two, in sort of around about 2000, um, I found this picture from a workshop in the early 1990s. Um, and it's nice because it kind of encapsulates the, the state or the, 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 the composition of astronomy in South Africa at the time. So I think this was about 1993. Um, maybe Patricia can remember. Anyway, it was a workshop run at the SAO, and pretty much everyone in the astronomy community at the time was represented here. And you can see some very familiar youthful faces in the picture. Um, so that was astronomy around 1993. Um, and it's, it's, it kind of gives you a sense of what needed to be done over the subsequent decades to really, to, to really make astronomy um, shine in, uh, on this continent. Um, uh, so things really got going 
in a big way uh, in 2000 when Cabinet approved um, the construction of SALT. And that provided the, the catalyst for producing a program that will be able to generate the human capacity in order to make full use of this fantastic instrument. Um, not shortly afterwards, of course, there were already discussions about SKA, but at the time, the major driving force was SALT. Um, and there was a, a great feeling that we did not want SALT simply to become a very fancy collection of steel, concrete, and glass. It had to not only produce excellent science, but it also had to be the driving force for building capacity and research um, in, in, in South Africa, not just in astronomy, but, uh, but in science in general. So it really had to provide that, that driving force. Um, so the, year, the following year, there was a strategic planning exercise run by the, the National Research Foundation. And at that meeting, um, the idea of NASP was f first uh, proposed. Uh, and things have started getting going with the setting up of a steering committee led by Pat Patricia Whitelock. Uh, and discussions then began in how to put together a program that would be able to produce the capacity to make the full use of make full use of salt. Um, so in in 2002, uh, there was a, a, a meeting um, which involved a, a number of bids to host NASP, um, notably uh, from 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 Potterstrom, um, from Rhodes, uh, from UCT. And um, it was uh, attended by myself and, and Di Reddy, uh, who provided an enormous amount of support for the UCT bid. And at the end of that meeting, um, it was decided that um, UCT should host it, not necessarily that because UCT was the best place to host it, because, but because I, I, I think it, was the, it had the best chance of getting going um, almost immediately, um, and uh, th there was a there was a, what was remarkable about that meeting was the degree of uh, of um, just the, the, sen the sense that everyone really wanted to make this thing work and make it work quickly and get it, get get the whole program off off the ground uh, as soon as possible. So that was a, a, a really uh, an amazing experience for myself, um, and uh, it gave me the sense that. The community really wanted to, 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 to get this program off the ground and, and make it a success. And then, came, then, then, then the, the real work started. So from, from, um, from April through to January 2003, a lot of work had to be done. So the steering committee, together with colleagues around the country, had to put together a program, um, a curriculum. Um, that curriculum needed to be accredited at UCT. And that was really only made possible, was made possible by the fact that there was already in the physics department a, um, a very successful honors program. And in the early years of NAS, it was decided that the NAS program should in some sense piggyback off the, the, the physics honors program, at least initially. And that was very important for accreditation. I don't think accreditation would have gone so smoothly had we not had the physics department at UCT on board. Um, then, as Patricia has already mentioned, uh, we needed to secure funds. So we had a program in place, but we didn't yet have the, the funding in order to provide the bursaries required for our students. And um, Ahmed Bauer of the Ford Foundation was instrumental in providing that first uh, allocation of funds to get the program off the ground and, and to pr provide funds for the teaching and also bursaries for our students. Um, some money did come from the NRF, but uh, we wanted, it, was, it was clear that we wanted to provide really good bursaries to, 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 to provide the necessary support for our students. And uh, the Ford Foundation played a critical role in that. Uh, we had to select an, an administrator, so Penny Middlecoop came on board as, as the first administrator. And then, of course, we had to go out and find students um and uh and and provide accommodation for them when they arrived in cape town so there's a lot of work that had to be done in those eight or nine months leading up to the program launch which was hosted at the time by dvc cheryl de la 
Um, another thing happened uh, around about the same time, which I think was, uh, was, was critical for the, for the future of NASP, uh, and that was the graduation of the first three black African PhDs, Saramatola Sefeko, Hebin Badupe, who unfortunately isn't here today. I would have really have loved to have uh, caught up with him, and Leratodi uh, uh, Liwu. Um, and Ramatola and Tebe played a critical role later on, both in teaching NASP, so Tebe came on board to teach uh, at, the, at the master's level, and Ramatola and Tebe were instrumental in setting up the the bridging program, or the extended program initially, and then the bridging program, um, and also the NASP Winter School, which provided the, the recruiting ground for the, uh, the, the bridging program, um, which, uh, which was, was uh, led, uh, um, uh, which was uh, really driven by, by Ramatola Tebe uh, with, with, a, with, with uh, amazing support from uh, Sali Ali, who of course then took over the, the reins of of that program. Um, and uh, Ramatola still is involved, uh, critically involved in the running of the winter school. So I think this was very, um, very important to have those first three PhDs because not only did they involve themselves in the teaching, but they also uh, were excellent role models uh, to our first crop, first two or three crops of, uh, of students that came into the program. So in the early years, um, <laughs> we had, uh, you know, we had uh, many successes. We had many challenges in, in running courses. There was a sense at the time that it was extremely theory top heavy. Um, there had to be evolution in the curriculum. Um, and, uh, but there were also some, some firsts. So for example, we ran the first online VAR video course in high energy astrophysics, which was run by Oki Diaga at the time. And in those days, we didn't have load shedding um, <laughs> to, interrupt our to, to, to interrupt our lectures, but we had the high felt thunderstorm. So every so often there would be a thunderstorm and the video feed would go down and then Oki would come back um, and continue his lectures. Um, and he did this brilliantly. It really was a fantastic course, and uh, way ahead of its ahead of, of its time, um, and uh, and you know it's become mainstream now. But uh, back in 2003, courses by video were 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 quite a rarity. Um, the following year, we. We felt that uh, it was necessary to bring students into the program earlier, and we uh, set up the summer school. And the summer school played um, two important uh, roles. One, to, to get the students to know each other, to, to learn about their backgrounds, to become friends, and also to learn about astronomy in South Africa. So there was a road trip, trip that went around the country to the, all, of, all the various national facilities. There was um, a, uh, a series of lectures run by the NASP lecturers, so to give an introduction, uh, introduction to many of the topics that would be covered during the course of the year. And, um, but it was a great way for the, the students to really start to bond and become the, the community that they would, would, uh, would form in, in future years. Um, and uh, the... Um, the, the, the summer school ran over a number of weeks, and I think it was, uh, was, was a, a great way for both the scientific community in South Africa and also the students to get to know each other, which then laid the foundations for future projects, um, both at honors and at master's level. So, of course, there were challenges, um, and the program had to evolve. Um, and in particular, there were challenges with the, with the curriculum. In those early years, because we had collaborated quite strongly with uh, theoretical physics, um, um, there was rather a heavy, too, too heavy a, a, an emphasis on, on theoretical physics and, uh, and less applied physics, uh, which was applicable to ast astronomy. So there had to be evolution of the curriculum. 
We also needed a secure and sustainable funding model. If you remember, Ford, the Ford Foundation only came on for two years, and we needed to find additional funds to keep the program going beyond 2005. And uh, thanks to, uh, to uh, connections, uh, the, the connection that George had uh, um, with Stuart Saunders of the Mellon Foundation, we were able to secure funds uh, from them to keep the program running for through 2005 and 2007. The Cannon Collins Trust also provided funding, and of course then that laid the, 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 the foundation for DST to, to come on board and provide a long-term sustainable funding model. The other thing we learned, which I think is very important, is that transformation isn't just about providing good bursaries. Um, we were very naive in this respect. We came in thinking that all we had to do was provide excellent courses and, and money, and our students would su succeed. And um, we learned very quickly that that was not the case. Um, and that led to the development of the, the NAS bridging course and, of course, the winter school, which was run by Sali Ali, um, Tevin Badupe, and uh, um, Ramatola Tsepeka. Uh, we also had visits from uh, involvement from the National Association of Black Physicists in the US um, and visits from Hakim, uh, Hakim uh, Olisi and uh, with, with involvement of Charles McGruder and other, others um, um, around 2008. Um. So for me personally, there are many memories. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up by just mentioning some of these. Um, the major one was the privilege that I, I had working with um, dedicated, brilliant people. Um, and in those early years, in, in particular, my, my, you know, my, my work with uh, Patricia and getting the program off the ground, um, is is a, is a, is really you know one of one of one of the greatest memories of of, of my career is, is sitting down with her and having discussions about how to take things take things forward. Uh, but there were many other brilliant people in the program, and uh, two things come to mind: watching Manfred Helberg, for example, condense uh, plasma physics into a three three week mod model. Uh, probably one of the few people who was who was able to successfully adapt a course to three weeks um, and really sort of synthesize everything down to the sort of core principles. It really was amazing watching the master at work uh, uh, teaching that course. Um, also, um, and I'm sorry to see that, uh, that uh, Pete, Pete Menkes isn't here, but uh, seeing Pete Menkes uh, and Edward Jura uh, um, work together and form the, the foundations of astronomy in Uganda, I think that really was uh, was an amazing thing to watch uh, uh, start to begin to happen. You can kind of see Ugandan astronomy begin from, the, from those early interactions. Um, and then, of course, attending project pre presentations and uh, the awards dinner at the Winter School are also uh, great memories, uh, which, uh, which I often re uh, reflect back on. Um, and then, for me, again, personally, going out onto the mountain and hiking with uh, some of you, some of, uh, some of my former students who went on to do masters and PhDs as well. So the NASP hike became a feature during the summer school. And then of course gradu uh, celebrating success uh, at graduation, uh, graduation uh, seeing our students go on to do masters and PhDs and succeed in their careers going forward. Uh, these are all very important to me. Um, is that NASP still necessary? I think the consensus is absolutely. Um, and I really do hope over the coming decade or two, the NASP will continue to grow um, and be well resourced and uh, continue to build these amazing networks, scientific network, networks, networks of, 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 of friendships um, that have made the program such a success over the last 20 years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, P Peter, thank you. Uh, we'll leave that running. Oh, we can leave his uh, thing running, if you will. Um, yeah, uh, that was a wonderful summary of, of events uh, and I'm sure brought back many memories to many people in the room.